Welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Vincent Green. And I'm your host, Lord John Tui. We got Karen Mack in the back, and we're a pair of rankers. Now, let's get this show on the road, motherfuckers. <laughs> Spooky. Spooky now. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> uh, all right, now we're back with another special episode of Pair of Rankers where we list things from certain areas or whatever the fuck. We just make lists. It's whatever. Of we, look, we rank things. Let's not. Yeah. Let's not. Yeah, it's very yeah, so yeah. So the first, very first special episode we did was we ranked all their favorite uh, superhero releases 2021, our top five going in descending order, and at the end we had a dishonorable mention. So we're going to do something again here, something similar again, but uh, when I say similar, the exact same thing. With but in the terms of like the horror genre, was our favorite releases of 2021 from the horror genre. And um, Noel, do you want to kick us off because we're a little bit short on time, so you just want to get stuck straight into this. Sure. I'm just going to go open up with five with a film. I thought it was a bit underrated by some, a bit overrated by some, but yeah. Antlers. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed Antlers too. We just did an episode uh, recently on it too. Check it out. Mm. Spotify. Check us out on I Facebook I something that's too. got a bit of, a, a bit of lore. MDK <laughs> Productions 2020 were really bad at filming <laughs> Um I just like it had a bit of lore. It had a, a, an excellent main character. and It had that little bit of unc- discomfort. That's what I always look for in a horror film. A very safe way to feel uncomfortable, um, and this was exactly that. Uh, it, it, I'm not saying it was a flawless movie, but based on the hard flawless movies, victory, year, I really, really enjoyed Anders. Uh, it's definitely one. It would definitely be in my top five list of horrors. If somebody yeah. just came to me and said, "What, what films do you think I should have seen?" I would say, "You know what? This is definitely one of them because you haven't seen it a thousand times before, which is always." Good, especially in so our hard. favorite genre, but definitely the tropiest genre of all the genres. Yeah, is made after perhaps rom coms, yeah. horror, of course. Uh, it's very so this one, things. yes, this very formulaic. This one was shot from a kid's perspective, as a, and it Lucas. was Lucas. Yeah, and I don't know. It, it had it, it. It made me uncomfortable. I haven't found. I didn't feel like I seen it a thousand times, and um, explored new mythology. The, the, the windy go, yeah. The practical effects, god dear. I, I yeah, blown away. By it. Oh, I was going to get that with a uh, Gilmore del Toro involved movie he produced, absolutely. And Scott Cooper, the Rowan director, I think. Uh, but just, I just, it, I just felt like I, I was just so blown away by that that it met my list yeah. over other films that I was struggling with, but just for that visual effect and just, um. Uh, just how well it was executed and how much yeah. it relied on practical effects when it could because we're both practical effects guys. Yeah, um, yeah it, it makes number five on my list. What about you? Yeah, like, uh, I, um, it's before we move off anchors, I'm the same way that the very last impression on me as well, like, just in terms of the look and the feel of it and how depressing it was and, it, like, or purposely depressing because the area itself was very decrepitude and stuff. It was a very, very well done movie, in my opinion. But um, my number five, it it, it came, came to the state of... I. I love this franchise so much is the only reason this movie probably made my top five because I was disappointed by this movie. It almost became my dishonorable mention. But I know what I'm, that is. I'm going to throw in uh, David Gordon Green's Halloween Kills as my number mm-hmm. five um, simply because I so I, I want us to get past these older franchises because especially the way they're rebooting them or, or sorry, recontinuing them or recon, sorry. But um, I, I loved the intensity of the movie like even though it, mm. to me it didn't feel like a Halloween uh, movie in the terms of the way Michael Myers was like killing like 12 people like a Jason Voorhees type people uh, kills like half a Haddonfield it's, it's yeah. insane uh, it's he, a problem as Tim didn't say it's a problem it was, <laughs> it was a tornado that started heading in that that's what he mm. was in that film we discussed it before yeah, yeah it just uh, to me it um, it wasn't really a Halloween movie in the terms of how the violence was portrayed but the sheer intensity of the movie and the sheer force of nature Michael Myers became in that movie, even though it really didn't sit with the way they were trying to make it very realistic in the Halloween H40. To me, it left a lasting impression, even though I was very disappointed by it, that the kills were insane, the intensity of the movie, it just, it started off 90 miles an hour and it didn't back off. And that's something I appreciate, except for that five or 10 minutes yeah. chasing the mental... Like it makes number five. Yeah, it makes number five. Yeah, it's definitely... It makes number five of this year. Yeah, because okay, you know, yeah. so inside of that, does not make number five in its own franchise. So. It does not make number five in its own. Well, there you go. Actually, I think I, I, I'm just going to move on because I actually <laughs> thought that was such a cool place. <laughs> but uh, number number four in for me, uh, um, the sequel uh, to a film that was number one on my list that didn't exist because we didn't do it, but mm. it was a quiet place too. 
Yeah, oh, that's a good choice. I like that. It was a good choice, I thought. I thought it was a good film. I really enjoyed it. And like, I mean, I think its biggest shortcoming is something I feel sorry for it for. Yeah. And when you do something truly new, yeah, and then you do a second film, you're doing yeah. your ex- like Aliens was excellent. And Alien, victim of your own success. Victim of your own success. So you can up the scale. They did, mm. but we we know we, we've. We're just seeing, it feels like extended scenes from the first one. We, we yeah. know how the, the monsters work. We know their weakness. We know so much about from the first film. So yeah. I think that cost it quite a lot. And you can't really blame it for that. But I really, really enjoyed it. I really, yeah. really did. Um, yeah. I like sensory deprivation horror. We've talked about how that's almost its own genre. Yeah. Bird Box, Don't Breathe, uh, The Quiet Place Part 1 and 2, and, and, and a million I'm probably forgetting. Yeah. Um, I, I like I, I like that. I like the end of discomfort that being deaf in that world and uh, how much of it was shot yeah. from our perspective. Imagine just like... Millicent Simmons. Isn't Millicent it? Simmons. Imagine mm. bumping into a table you think, oh God, and you walk on, but you're deaf. You didn't know that an old yeah. light bulb is after rolling off and hitting a hard uh, stone floor and smashing. You don't know that. that yeah. That's so mind-fucking to me that, that I just love, I I think, love the world. Yeah, I think, yeah, I love the, the world too. I love the tone. Um, I love the, the height of the stakes. Um, that one mistake can lead to your death instantaneously, almost. Um, but without I think, you being deaf, yeah, I just you think know, without you being deaf, it's... I just think what a quiet place two proved uh, that about quiet place one is that John Krasinski was the heart and soul of that franchise, and the fact yeah. that he played such a small part in the sequel because of his death in the first movie weakened the movie. Even though you have Killian Murphy coming in here, I just think the relationship and the strength of his relationship with his children, Noah Jupe and Millicent Simmons from the first one, and his relationship and chemistry with his actual real-life wife, Emily Blunt, was just flawless, and it felt such like a natural family. I think it was so hard to recreate the stakes in the same way in terms of the sequel, because the first movie was the stakes, even though they were small in terms of a global setting, but to have a family fighting for one another is oftentimes the highest stakes in terms of our insular beings. So like to have the stakes are increased in terms of she can save humanity with this signal played through a radio, it just lacked that same impactfulness for me in terms of how John Krasinski portrayed uh, Lee in yeah. the first movie and the yeah. second, second movie. And that's what I'm saying. If we'd done this 2018, I'm going to yeah. say it was the first one. Yeah, something like we, that. It was number one. It was number one with a bullet. It was number yeah. one and it was number two. I just oh, love it. Yeah, my yeah. number four, um, moving from a quiet place to would be your number five is Antlers. And for a lot of the same reasons, cool. um, I, I, I don't think it lived up to expectation. That's why he doesn't rank higher on my list. Um, oh, man, they do. Yeah. They, like, they're unfortunate. They're unfortunate. Yeah, they're yeah. unfortunate. And it's like, they didn't say it. They didn't say we made the best film ever. Yeah, it was promoted for too long. It was put the days pushed forward. Yeah, it was anticipation that was never created by they themselves. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so they suffer from it because they never um, uh, anticipated the expectations of the crowd to be so heightened by the time it was viewed. Yes. Because they expected it to be two years previous, but because of lockdown and COVID and whatnot, it only got released late last year. Um, yeah, no, I just thought it was a beautiful movie. It, like, it really captured that that kind of Appalachian uh, kind of like uh, down under look, these kind of like forgotten, almost forgotten towns and cities. Yes. Um, uh, so, uh, the, these kind of forgotten places in the, the south part of America and something they've suffered since the reunification after the Civil War. That something they all often spoke about is that they were kind of forgotten by like you know the the larger federal government and stuff like this and it just kind of encapsulated the downtroddenness um but, but at the same time it it kind of went into this mythos that's not very like familiar to a lot of us outside of supernatural a lot of people know what wendigo is uh, it was really really cool the creature things were flawless which you're always going to get as we mentioned with something with Guillermo del Toro's associated with um the, the little kid that played Lucas was amazing. Curry Russell, um, Jesse Clemens don't look like the same species, let alone the same, mm. the same <laughs> relation. <laughs> but Curry Russell was awesome. Jesse Clemens is always good. Um, and they left it open for a sequel, um, which is pretty cool because I want to see yeah. this expanded. I want to see the mythos kind of delved into a bit more, which is the, what we mentioned on the episode for me was a little bit disappointing. So, um, yeah, so it's Andrews for me and it's uh, quite place two for you. So, what's your number three? Um, the trade fucking fly to these. I, I think for number three, I'd like to be walking in a Willy yeah. Wonderland. <laughs> With Nicolas Cage. Yes. Amazing. This resurgence of Nicolas Cage, a colour from space. I, I'm not sure if that was this yeah. year. I'm just now no. realising I should probably put that. Colour of space wasn't this year, no, it was last year. Thank you. That's, well, that's well, 2020, not 2021. There you go. If that was 2020, that's good. I, I just say yeah. to myself what that happened. But Willy Wonderland, I just love the idea of um, it, just going to a Chuck E. Cheese 
And I, mm. I'm sure this is an American thing where every, like, a lot of kids look up in amazement at these like animatronics and some people look up and go, the devil is in that doll. <laughs> 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 and this, and it just, I, I don't know, it was Nicolas Cage. It's like a film meant for Nicolas Cage by Nicolas Cage, with Nicolas Cage in mind. And yeah. everyone was eating tiny Nicolas Cage. To get the <laughs> you know, it was Kind of like those tiny little marshmallows. Did you see the new Ghostbusters yet? No, no, no I've seen, I want to see the trailer now, the yeah. tiny little. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I've seen the tiny safe ones, Mark Marshall, Mark yeah. Spider-Man. It's not a spider because I haven't seen the film. Yeah, it's in the trailer. It, but anyway, it's, um, it's out. It's out. Yeah, we, we won't go too fast now. We're only like ten minutes in. I just realised. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like, that's why it's my number one. <laughs> <laughs> so, Six minutes long show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I just checked. I'm going a little bit too far. But yeah. Willy Wonderland had oh. the grotesqueness the self-awareness for for yeah. all of its silliness to kind of slide your body without affecting it was cool. Yeah. I didn't know why Nicolas Cage was, was there. Was it personal? Yeah. I didn't know I why he was so cool under pressure. There, to me. You remember he was playing like the pinball machine like, yeah. in between like he, he massacres. Yeah. 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 You know, like absolutely incredible. I just left I just got the shit out of uh, I, my partner and I asked, well, she went brilliant. <laughs> that was it. Like, not the we did, it, it did not need a deep dive. It did not reflect. Like, I like how it reflected the modality of man. No, 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 no. <laughs> that was just fucking fun and we're good, you know? Yeah, no, that's so, one thing I love. Like, I, I don't care what Nicolas Cage makes. I'm going to watch it. I have watched probably nearly almost more of his back catalogue of any individual actor, I'd say, than any individual actor that has ever existed. I will watch Nicolas Cage in anything. I watched him through his A-list days when he was a bona fide movie star, action star. I watched him in his dramatic roles when he did the likes of like Leaving Las Vegas, Matchstick Men, all this. And I will watch that motherfucker until the day he's put in the ground or knowing him shot off so you, in the outer space. Like whatever, when he stole the Constitution. The I grew, I, yeah, National Treasure wanted to love those movies. But I've grown up with Nicolas Cage my entire life. I watch him in everything he puts out. I watched Pig. I watched. We did a show with Geek Sweat recently, uh, Pirates of the Ghostland. Um, uh, Kyle I'll Space. Always, I love that movie. I'll always be grateful to the man for raising Arizona. Oh, him and John Goodman. Like it's hilarious. There's, there was everything about that film. Was he can do that everything. Was, like, do you remember uh, the episode of Community? Leaving Las Vegas or whatever that. Yeah, yeah leaving yeah. Las Vegas. Do you remember the episode yeah, of Community? Is Nicholas Cage good or bad? Nicholas Cage! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. I'm such a deep thinker in these kind of capacities. I yeah. completely don't like. Yeah, just the stack. <laughs> to me, sometimes it comes across like. To, do you ever see like a really talented like football player like Ronaldinho back in the day? Like it came so easy to him, he forgot to put in effort. But every now and again, he was like, "Oh shit, yeah, I should put in effort." And he's world class. Like that's yeah, what Nicholas Cage yeah, is like to me. It. It's like acting is Somebody, so easy to. He's football that he forgot that he's actually supposed to still be trying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because yeah. it's yeah, a good point. It's a, yeah, no, it's a good analogy. Yeah, so it's sometimes for me, it's like Nicholas Cage is like so coked off his face, allegedly. Um, but like you know, prior to the ghostland, that film I know, looks if you're like... addicted to buying castles. I think. It's <laughs> <laughs> but like, I just think for me, if you look back to Nicholas Cage's back catalog, um, and I've grown up with him, that he's like he's so like individualistic in terms of the roles he's committed to over the past twenty odd years. Like you said, raising Arizona. Like we mentioned, leaving Las Vegas, Mastic Man. You mentioned The Rock, Con Air. You can mention like Color of Space, Manny. <laughs> Snake eyes, you know, just like eight millimeter. Like I just think, like con inter- air, man, con fucking air. Man, I just can't wait to be doing an episode like action movies or something. We're doing a Nicolas Cage episode. I was born here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, get the yeah. show on the road. Uh, number three for you. Yeah, number three. Uh, you say, um, uh, Willie's Wonderland. My number three is what your number four was, and that's a quiet place too. Um, I really enjoyed A Quiet Place too. It was uh, came on the back for me of playing The Last of Us for the first time, part one and two. It was very reminiscent of that. Some of, not only was it like I think me too. I think I was playing Last of Us yeah. around about that same time. Yeah, yeah and, it was and overlap think, in my head. With that as well. Yeah, I, and I think like I never I wanted to play The Last of Us for as far as I can remember, but I had, had a, a PlayStation for a long time. I was uh, like an Xbox head. I was just playing Xbox games, and that's an exclusive. So. When I finally got to play that, it left such a lasting impression on me because I waited six or seven years maybe to play the first one, and then I played the second one directly after. And that that relationship between Joel and um, what's her fucking name? Uh, what's the the girl's name in The Last of Us? 
but uh, are you checking out there? Uh, what's her name? No, I'm actually not. Sorry. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, the relationship between the two main characters in the last was uh, just uh, and the, the the whole old wolf young uh, cub kind of thing, um, and the way it was shot and the way it was brought to life. The a Quiet Place too was very reminiscent in terms of me, except you know you take out these kind of uh, cordyceps and fungi type uh, infected humans and you replace them with these uh, you know ultra sound sensitive uh, creatures. And I just thought the whole the aesthetics of both of them were very uh, similar. Uh, Killian Murphy, Ellie. Ellie, thank you so much. Killian Murphy's portrayal of um, Emmett in A Quiet Place too was very uh, it kind of smacked of Joel for me from Quiet Pla- uh, from. Uh, the Last of Us, and I just thought seeing him. I think I seen it like six months after I completed both uh, both games, and the way stylistically they were so similar that I just thought it was a fantastic movie on its own. But something that we mentioned in your pick was without John Krasinski throughout the entirety of the movie, it just lacked that impactfulness for me, and it felt like it was kind of like we're going to go bigger, but they didn't get better. And um, I, I'm always saying that point of it. Yeah, scope. Sometimes yeah. you say, shit, what do we have here? Well, you said, well, we have a bigger budget because the first one's successful. Right, scope. And yeah. scope doesn't mean shit to me, man. It, yeah. It, when it's executed, great. But, but it, yeah, yeah, I, it, yeah, I agree with you. It, yeah, it, look, it looked absolutely beautiful. I'm not going to say it didn't. Like, the action sequences and then the big set pieces where you see the side of the train torn out right after Melissa Simmons' character. She survives the attack from um, a creature because Killy Murphy uh, arrives in the scene and kills it. All those things that Jimon Hansu was very poorly uh, executed, or his character was very poorly done. But like, apart from that, the community, their their expression when they see normality in such a strange time, which was amazing when they see people actually here on fire talking. And then that dude ends up getting taken out because he like literally hits every single fucking stone on the well with that bucket and he's collecting water. It has so many flaws. But for me, Maybe because it was right after the Irish cinemas just opened, it felt like an event to me, and it, it paid off. Not as good as the first movie, granted. It was the first film I seen in yeah. the theaters for uh, all. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know. I yeah, and, even know. And, 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 and even though, and even though we have a weird cursed history with Quiet Place uh, franchise trying to get it on tape, getting recorded, what are you or whatever. About? We've covered it sixteen times. <laughs> but, um, we yeah. recorded it once. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so like for me, it felt like an event. It lived up to expectations, but it wasn't as good as the first movie because I wasn't expecting it to be by quite a margin. Yeah, by I, quite, I, yeah which yeah. is not as well. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on and tell you my number two now and tell Go you ahead. straight off the bat I broke a rule. Yeah, um, because for me, uh, Fear Street was an event. Yeah, it was three films over three weeks. God, was I happy during that? If I had to pick one, I'd probably pick the second one. Yeah, is that your number um, two? Yeah. Yeah, uh, but a Fear Street was just this one epic. The Fear Street like, trilogy. I, yeah, I, I just didn't realize you could make a, a film, release them on a weekly basis, like have the quality be that high, have it be that enjoyable. And I, I just, you know what? If you know a moment you realize I've spoiled an age you're living in. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I'm truly spoiled. Just, I remember going to my grandmother. Just one check, she, she didn't even have RT2. Go ahead. Just one second, no, before, uh, uh, so we can have just an open discussion about this. My number two is the Fear Street trilogy as well, just so we can just have oh, an open okay. discussion yeah. about this. So sorry. what are you saying about your grandmother? Sorry, dude. Sorry, I remember going to my grandmother's house. You know, I'm old enough to remember being an heir, you know, and I've grown up in the 90s. Yeah. She didn't even have an RT2. She just had the, the, the rabbit ears. So she had an RT1. <laughs> yeah. That was <laughs> End of story. There them. was just <laughs> the Angelus. It was just the news, the Angelus, the boring, I don't know, how to plant plants yeah it's like what we talked you. about on Return of the Critics like we have a certain uh, weird affiliation with specific movies because we didn't get to see a lot of movies growing up no. so the movies we did get to see we actually have a weird affection for like Dirty Dancing Ghosts these weird ro- romantic type movies yeah the, the Die Hard exactly but yeah. I remember like I watched that uh, first one I thought that was brilliant I loved that did you like that Sheila said yeah I absolutely loved that that was great our dumbass is taught that the second week, second part was going to come out a year later. You mm-hmm. should have mm-hmm. been looking into my eyes when I realized <laughs> it came out a week later. Yeah, I think I told I you. Li- you told that's yeah, right. Yeah, I texted. I, I was like, dude, are you taking a fear little- street on Friday? And you're like, what you mean? Oh, dude? I was like, I yeah, part two's out on Friday. <laughs> yeah. I just lit up. I, 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 like, I remember leaving the cinema um, after seeing like Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Rings, yeah. and you have to wait till like basically December twelfth or whatever the hell it was. Of, yeah, I think it was December seventeenth or some some shit like that. I was, I was yeah, it was around that, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, and then it was like fuck, you know, it is what it is. Though. I leave, but again, it was like a week. I had to wait a week. I, yeah. I remember. I'm just feeling so special. So that felt like something I'll never forget. That yeah. felt like that felt like 
a new time to, to live in, kind of, yeah. to me. Love Fear Street. Uh, there's a lot to dive into. It was fun. Yeah. It was uh, spooky. It was grotesque. It was mostly silly. It wasn't a particularly somber or yeah. heavy film, nor did it try to be. Yeah. It was very um, uh, meta at the time. It was very meta. Yeah, yeah. It had a lot of self awareness. The characters didn't take themselves too seriously, yeah. so we didn't have to take them too seriously. But there was some absolutely grotesque fucking deaths. I mean, somebody went through a cake cup. Yeah. yeah. One thing, characters. One Wasn't of the that, absolute yeah. main characters. Yeah, I did not expect it. Yeah, one thing. Expecting I, at the last second, somebody hits the off button yeah, or whatever. Exactly, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because she was supposed to, she was literally just confirmed with someone's love interest. Like, she was someone's love interest the whole through. Yes, and they just kissed yeah. and stuff. So, like, these curveballs that I, I love, that. I love when nobody's. I love when nobody, like, back when, back when Game of Thrones was good, nobody was safe. Nobody was, and nobody Red should Wedding. be safe in a horror movie. Red Wedding being the, the kind when of the dent degree. When I watched, uh, I think it's uh, episode eight or nine of season three, Red Wedding, when I seen that for the first time, I watched it on my own. The entire credits played through, and I just sat there with a shocked look on my face. Like, that was like very few like times I, I did not see that coming at all. Like, really? you know what I mean? Like, I like because I didn't read the books or anything. And as soon as that happened, I was like, what the fuck? It's like, all bets are off now. Because I figured Rob Stark was going to be the main protagonist for the entire series. You know what I mean? Um, but when I, uh, the reason I picked Fear Street for my number two is that it's like what you said. It just, it felt like an event. Um, I got so, like, I got so into it. Immediately, I was like, uh, I was looking forward every Friday. I was like, I wanted to make sure I seen it straight away because it, it really found its way onto social media, the zeitgeist. Where it's like the whole meme culture, it was everywhere. It was like it was. It took over the so the kind of consciousness for like not only its three week run, but probably a couple of months afterwards. And one thing I I, I was like as more surprised by the fact that I enjoyed it so much the first time was when we went back to watch it for the episode we did on it. How excited I was to go back and watch it. I was like, I was like, I'm going to yeah. watch this all in one day, and it's going to be amazing. It's like five or five or six hours, and it was just like. Or four and a half hours or something like that. And I was like, it just felt like an event. And it just yeah. felt like something that you have to experience in one go. And and I think it's, uh, growing up as a massive R.L. Stein fan, I read all the Goosebumps books. And I, I loved uh, Fear Street I read it too. I, I, I can't claim that. Yeah, I, I said, like, you know, Ron, yeah. uh, Christopher Pike was my... Uh, yeah, I do. I, I have, kid, like, si- I still have like 62 uh, e-books of Goosebumps on my tablet. Like, it's like, I, I'll pick them up every now and again. I might give them That's a awesome. freeze. Yeah, I fucking love those books. Like they're they're what got me into horror so much. My late brother William, um, but like they, R.I.P. Uh, William, so yeah, R.I.P. Of course, um, big shout out because like he's literally what turned me into a film freak. Like he you know, comes what I mean? up, you, you know, <laughs> you, you, me and you've been friends a long, long, long time, and um, you, your brother his, come up. His birthday is actually on the fourteenth as well next week. Happy birthday! Ever since I started doing this shit with you. His name has come up more times than he has in the previous fifteen years of our yeah, friendship. Because it's all movie related. Because I, yeah, because I didn't realize. Yeah. Oh, like it's cool. It yeah. is cool, man. We live on to each other. Yeah. I think that's really cool. And I, I, I'm not. Even, I don't even have a sarcastic comment. <laughs> I'm trying to genuinely say something nice, people. <laughs> but anyway, um, um, yeah, no. So it just uh, that uh, Fear Street. When I seen it come back, it just had that real nostalgic vibe for me. Um, that I don't really get a lot of the times nowadays with certain horror. Like, you don't get to see that. Like, even when Jack uh, Black did those kind of silly Goosebumps movies, I was all there for them. Like, you know, I, I watched both those movies a couple of occasions, watched them with the kid, watched them with Lorraine, watched them by myself. I, I just like, I just love seeing those creatures come back to life. I can, I expect a lot of certain movies, but I can turn my brain off and just like enjoy a movie for what it is. And for Fear Street, I didn't really have a high expectations because it's been a long time since I read the source material. But, um, when I'm going into it, I was very excited, and I it, it blew me away in the terms of like, except for the last the last part I thought with the accent was, was fucking terrible. But um, uh, the slasher movie, the kind of the kind of meta slash, like you had the kind of the meta kind of slasher in the first movie, and in the second one, supernatural one. slasher as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it just covered a lot of ground from the horror genre and it showed it did, a lot of respect it? and yeah. a lot of love. And we got to see like really cool monsters, a lot of gore, a lot of action, some really funny characters. Some interesting characters, and I, I hope we get to see an anthology because I know the the girl, uh, the girl, the, the uh, woman that directed and wrote uh, the show, or would you call it a show? No, it's a trilogy. It's no, three it's, separate it's movies. A, it's, it's, it's movies. Yeah, yeah. Thing, it, it, you got to see it on Netflix, and it yeah. came out weekly, and it's something that a part of your brain goes. It's mini series. That's not a movie. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's just a part like, of your brain said it's meant for TV or whatever. Yeah, to it's release movies. It's like you said, to release the trilogy in such a short turnaround and to have all three movies be very, very enjoyable for completely different very reasons. 
is very impressive by the creator and by Netflix and by the cast and all of that shit. So it left a big mark on me, Fair Street. I really enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed talking about it. Even now, I enjoy talking about it. It's a lot of fun. But like before we get the fuck out of here, because we got some other shit to do, Noel, watch your numero uno from 2021. I am going to have to... I'm going to... I, you know, this film was simply too good for me to... It actually technically came out on Christmas Day of 2020. Again, breaking the rule. But of course, I didn't come yeah. around to 2021, and it's just so boo. good. Boo. Breaking rules, boo. boo. But um, it was Promising Young Woman. Go ahead. So um, this film, you know, got some pushbacks. and so, But this was um, the fem, like revenge film with like a strong film. Yeah, well, yeah, but it's every. I, there's so little I can say about the one way because it turns all expectations on your head. Nobody was safe. Like it was the she was a promising young she was a genius even she was going in the medical field. Her friend dies in a hazing rape kind of scenario sure. and she falls into this kind of depression and she but it turns out she just turns out to be such a clever, amazing kind of like character. I spit on your grave. Oh yeah, like, but really you know what? Except, except for the gratuity is... and old murder hardness of <laughs> I spit in your grave. Mm. This is I spit in your grave done by a master. Yeah. This film is spectacular. I really need to check it out. I've never seen it. Dude. Oh, a promising young woman is yeah. it's the best film I watched in 2021. And because I, I, I'm only asking for six days. Yeah, no, I'm it's just good because six days. In, in your defense, it's the best release I know technically of 2021, but. You've seen it in 2021. So, oh, like, from 2021, it. oh, God, yeah. it's not like it's yeah. from 2012. It's, yeah, as you exactly. said, it's, it's six days. Like, yeah. yeah, and it's, to be honest with you, I'm going to let you have it because, cause, like, Christmas and that week, nobody exists, really. No, they don't. <laughs> and that's, yeah. and I, it's not I really a week. It, but even <laughs> just, you know what? It's, it's, it's a horror movie, uh, more of a thriller suspense thing, but you know, like, mm. the, the, the Venn diagram of horror is in the, the horror genre. Some of the best horrors are tr- 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 yes, of tr- course. Tr- yeah, yeah. But Had- Halloween, it, Jaws. Where do thing. most horrors come up short? The execution. The, f- the fucking... Well, actually, I think you're right, but I'm just going to say the ending. Yeah, it's the same thing. They do not stick the landing. Yeah, no, um, This film sticks the landing in sh- the, the most epic form um, bar any film I've ever seen bar The Thing. The yeah. Thing... Is on a god tier and it just can't, can't be touched. That's how well it sticks to land. Yeah, and it's the subtlety of it. Uh, you know what? Again, there's so much I can't say because it just, every 15 minutes uh, something becomes clear and nothing is what it was, and then 30 minutes later you kind of go, "What that dude? Yeah. This, oh, he won. Not him." And so, oh, oh well, actually, no. This one I see coming. Ah, oh, no. You know, yeah, yeah. that's not the watching it's been the most. It yeah. was a fucking script. And I'm surprised I never even talked to you about it. I just watched it and it's not... Yeah. It's, it's not bad. The movies we talk about are just on our slate. So yeah, that's the thing. We, 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 like, we you know. get bogged down in, in yeah. what we have to do. And that's what's so interesting. Yeah, it's like, funny because like we've, we've covered probably about 100 movies, give or take, maybe in the past 60 oh, or 70 episodes. Off, it's not a big exaggeration. You, you know what I mean? Because of Franchise Fridays and stuff like that, right? But the funny thing about it is like... We've probably watched another 200 movies, maybe on top of that, that we've yeah. never spoken about to each other in the yeah, past. Absolutely. It's, yeah. like, it's insanity. Like. <laughs> so I, uh, my number one pick is, and I, I know I didn't do a deep dive on it, but I'm sorry, it's just too well there yeah. for me to be in. I was even just there. I, I, I was looking for, uh, on my phone, I was looking for ways people uh, use synopsis of it. Yeah. So I could just say that, because at least that's like what would somebody could just read and yeah. not have something given away before I watch it. But this yeah. film has something every 20 minutes and I just don't know how to approach it. But it is... Uh, but I, I, and I spit on your grave done in a more realistic and more proper way with an excellent lead performance. I cannot stress enough how great this film is. Uh, and I recommend it to anyone. Vinny, number one. My number one is a movie that... I waited for a long time to watch. I missed out seeing it in the theaters for one reason or another. I have had my tickets booked like twice or three times. Um, eventually, this fucking fell through, and I was waiting to see it for a long time. And uh, that is the Edgar Wright horror suspense thriller, Last Night in Soho, starring um, Anna Joy Taylor. Seen it. Um, I, I won't give away any spiders. For me, I was absolutely no, 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 no. In this, in the context of this show, you have to give away spiders. People, no, people are seeing this, have seen it. So no, just no, go ahead. no, no. So, I, I, 
No, no, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd talk around uh, the big things. What what appealed to me about this movie was it just it captivated me in terms of the style, the the way it uh, captured two eras, modern uh, London and I think the 60s or 70s era London, uh, and just the fucking whole look of it. It just, it smacked of like style and just like the two performances of Anna J. Taylor and I can't remember the other girl's name, I'll check out uh, her woman's name, I keep saying girl, but that's an Irish thing just so people know. But um, uh, so like the the, the thing about that was it just Matt Reeves, I think was uh or is that his name? No, who's the dude that played Matt Smith, is it? The guy that played um Doctor Str- Doctor Who. But um the whole movie is just kinda like one thing I love about Edgar Wright movies is that you can say what you want about but to just have this specific style. You know an Edgar Wright right, movie when you're right, watching it. Yeah. The way he yeah. incorporates his movies in terms of the set design and the performances and the way he incorporates something that Cards always mentions, the Foley work, the soundtrack, the score. This movie was just like, it just, you know you're watching an Edgar Wright movie, but it also felt like it could have been any movie like picked up from the 60s or 70s era, British horror, suspense thriller. It had everything. It was a murder mystery. It, like, it had like this fucking... It had this kind of like weird like hand in hand style industry and the way the characters looked at specific times often conveyed how the character themselves felt in that moment or something. It was just like it was very not whimsical, but it was very pantomime or something about it. It just felt like it, it belonged on a stage. It was like it was constantly it was, it, to me it felt like it was constantly like, uh chain set, chain set, chain set. It was that kind of thing, like it was just very it moved very fluidly between the two different things like you know like you know the whole the whole storyline is about a girl to start seeing these uh, string of murders that ha- happened in 1960 Soho and she's like reliving these events through her dreams and she doesn't know if it's reality or whatever and she yeah. starts kind of like imitating this woman that she believes may, may or may not be murdered and that's what the whole movie is about like and it just waiting and incorporates everything for me i was like one of those movies again this year that i watched it was kind of like i was awestruck i didn't say anything really when i was watching it i was just like this is fucking awesome there's a scene where like a chase scene up the stairs or something won't keep out in the way but like just the way it was done and it's just like to me it was i was just like gobsmacked it shows you what you can do with horror when you really respect the, the genre if you don't just chase tropes and cliched fucking uh narratives or formulaic fucking yeah. story structures it just shows you what you can do you can create horror in so many different ways and for me last night in Toho did it in such a unique original way but was also so stylistically striking that for me it had to be my number one horror 2021 i was a little bit under taylor joined out and that's the yeah. reason I haven't watched it. Like, yeah. I hate when they pick an actor and they say, right, it girl, it guy, I don't fucking care. And then just put them in 85 things. But I, on, I don't, don't care. Oh, the other girl's name is Thomas and something. Yeah, I just checked on IMDb. She was in Old. That was a trash movie. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, Thomas and Mackenzie. She played a little okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, that trash movie bring is just too good a segue for me to not use yeah this honorable yeah. mention yeah let's get the fuck out I'll of here i'll let you go first just i don't know i just that my dishonorable mention of 2021 is a movie that i have lambasted through many episodes oh of, here we go uh, invasion of party snatcher so i won't go too much for deep diving up because as mentioned we're short on time and everybody pretty much knows my thoughts about this movie and that's candy man I, I i just think it's a fucking shit movie um it, the gore was used incorrectly. The the racial stereotyping of white people in it was fucking atrocious, and um, the I just think that to have a Candyman in your movie but not use the Candyman that made the franchise legendary and iconic, whilst mm-hmm. Tony Todd is still alive and kicking and vital, made zero sense to me. And um, I just thought like Nia Da Costa, I, I, she's obviously a good writer uh, and a good film director but she didn't do a good job here and I think like what's uh, Jordan... the name of the main actor in that the main male actor yeah yeah I'm doing Machine the second he's playing he ended up Morpheus. doing the Candyman while he did Morpheus yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 that's like, what his year was yeah he's a franchise killer <laughs> yeah yeah franchise yeah, killer yeah. Franchise killer that's what he is yeah yeah, yeah yeah that's what we're gonna just call look at the mirror and go franchise killer franchise killer <laughs> what <are you> <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so and sometimes me, you make it Michael Fassbender yeah, yeah, for me, I just thought it was a very um, uh, irresponsible movie in terms of its tone. And I thought it was a very disrespectful movie in terms of how it approached this franchise that it belonged to. And it didn't capture any of the magic or any of that beautiful, no. weird, gothic poeticism I of the first movie. Like you know what I mean? Like, I, like, like I, I just think like Tony well, Todd was such a wordy motherfucker in part one. But he, the way he did his words, the way... Candyman. Yeah, exactly. he is. 
It's you have to be because he has to be seductive or something. I mean, there's something about it. It was this yeah. weird seduction in part one, the way he uh, took his victims in part. Like uh, I just thought part one was just such a beautifully singular movie, and then, and then I watched it back to back with this new one. I seen the new one with you and Lorraine in the cinema, and I just thought it left no good impressions on me whatsoever. And I just thought when you get an opportunity in this moment in time to make a movie like that's from a pre-existing franchise and you decide to reboot it and then you don't incorporate the original villain makes absolutely no sense to me like. no. so no. i just think like it was a poorly distasteful movie a lot of times because it made white people seem so racist or unnecessarily at times like there was just an art dealer she's just like oh you're kind and she's like what do you mean by your kind and he's like she's like oh artists like oh, i was like oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah oh yeah, yeah. Great, great great fucking writing there um but no i just think his jordan peele's as I say, super racist, but I just think yeah. his his uh, fingerprints are all over that movie, and I just think he may have overshadowed Nia DaCosta's uh, initial um, uh, like reasons or initial thoughts behind how she was going to structure Candyman, in my opinion. But like, so what's your dishonorable mention? We get the fuck out of here. Well, I'm gonna show you up here just so you know if I can get the right. Uh, I wrote, I had Candyman <laughs> because I knew you were gonna do it. Yeah. I wrote Spiral. Spiral like, with Chris Rock. Yeah. Oh, um, no, it's Jigsaw! <laughs> Jesus Christ, kill it. Kill it. Yeah. Has it not suffered enough? Like, yeah. This is why I believe in Dignitas and the work they do. Yeah. It's, it, all that's left in this world is suffering, and it can never get better, yeah. and you deserve to go out on your own terms. Mm. And Spiral was a film absolutely nobody needed. And I wanted yeah. to make this film. First off, the twist at the end, I called a probably four minutes in. And it's not because I'm clever, it's because, of course, it's going to be. It was his partner just, or something, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, no, I bet. You, you know, the first sign he had, I had a slightly <laughs> troubled upbringing, and I went, oh, yeah, oh, fine, oh. And that was it, string, 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 done. Not to be honest clever, with you, I was like, he, wait, did Chris Rock, like, kind of co write this? And I, yeah, well, he probably, he, to me, he looks like a dude who's never seen a horror movie ever before. Yeah, He's going to come like up Chris, with a twist that's so simplistic. Is Chris Rock not <laughs> sick of, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. He wakes up every day and he's Chris Rock. That's who he is in this world. And, and Chris Rock's a great, yeah. great, funny man. But do you know what I say? Like, you know what? Maybe I'll try and act in this film. And he, was, and he did. And he acted. He didn't even act badly. What he did is like, Chris Rock. Chris Rock is a great <laughs> That's who Chris Rock would be. He should be Danny Dover from was, part one. Oh, my God. It was so formulaic. It was yeah. so boring. So obvious. Boring. Yeah. And that's so the worst. Obvious. A Saw movie should never be boring. It can be a it, Saw movie should never be boring. You can levy many things at the earlier Saw franchise, but you can't call the first four movies boring. And after that, they yes. just got so formulaic. Like, oh, yeah, 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 like, oh, no, this blah, 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 blah. person, a person you've seen get split in half with a yeah. bandsaw. It's actually a lie. He's actually And it's like, hey, 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 guess what, Noel? Maybe or maybe not. Just bear with me that the killer has a pre existing relationship with John Kramer. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, jeez. But yeah, just no, I'm right there enough. with you but for Spider Man. This film was yeah. just like every saw film in one. Just, just that, that insanity yeah. and that. It's like they just binge no. watch the franchise and wrote a saw movie. Just, I just at the end of it, because I remember, I asked Sheila if she wanted to watch it with me, my partner, and she said, uh, no, go ahead. Just like that. Just no, go ahead. And I did. And one I of the few. Like, was, one of the few new horror releases that we didn't even bother covering on Polly Statues in the second half of the year. Just, like. I, and you know what? It didn't even offend me enough to bring up. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just watched it and then I was done with it. Yeah. Just I, the Saw franchise it. would be a good franchise it's for you. It's on me that I watched it. That would be That's a good franchise me. for you. After that many Saw like films. Nine of them or something. Yeah. After that many Saw mm. films, I watched it. That's on me. Yeah, I just That's all I used to say. <laughs> I can't even be mad at it. I did that. <laughs> I just With put my hat back on and I just dragged my eyes back by my eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, holy shit, too much light. <laughs> I was thinking like, wow, I'm really rocking the world. <laughs> yeah, really oh my God, it's so white eye. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, yeah no, I, I'm totally good. Yeah, I'm t- yeah, Spire was uh, shit. Um, but so no, we get the fuck out of here. and um, Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, so a uh, quick run through before I get out of here. My number five, Halloween Kills. Your number five was Antlers. Uh, my number four was Antlers. Your number four Quiet Place 2. Yeah, mine was 3 was Quiet Place 2. You're number 3. Willy Wonderland. Willy's Wonderland. And number 2, Fear Street Trilogy for both was 
My my number, us. And your number one was Promising Young Woman, but you have to give me a week of, of the year. Yeah, a Promising Young Woman and mine was last night in Soho too. Uh so so we get the fuck out of here. There are top picks for our uh, horror releases of 2021 and our December mentions, mine was Candyman, yours was Spiral from Book of Saw. And yeah. uh, uh so this was uh, sorry, we are a pair of uh, rankers. I'm your host, Vincent Green. I'm your host, Alton Tui. We got Karamak in the back, and there are top releases, uh, horror releases 2021. See you next time, folks. Peace.